And welcome to this edition of Trailer Talk TV. Today we've got James from Adzerk in the, in the office. James, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, James is uh, working for a company called Adzerk and he'll describe what they do in a few minutes. But first we want to talk about utility publishers because they're going to be the hot item next year for ad tech as ITP kicks in. So, James, uh, before we just jump straight in, talk about Adzerk just briefly. Yeah, so Adzerk is a software as a service company that helps uh, publishers, utility publishers, apps, uh, build their own ad platforms. Okay, short and sweet, lovely. Let's talk about utility publishers, right? So this is a phrase that me and you came up with. Let's, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll wrestle over know, the copyright. I came up with it, you no, came Hold on, I think we came up with it together. <laughs> it's a collective idea. But the utility publisher idea is quite interesting. But let's discuss it, right? Because obviously it's not your traditional text-based publisher. It's not a publisher that depends wholly on ads. But what, what, how would you define a utility publisher? Yeah, I mean, I think the key, we look at a couple characteristics. Okay. Like one of the key things is they normally don't have an editor in chief. Uh huh. Right? So, like when you think about a traditional publisher, they're driven by putting out content. Mm. You know, and that content is then consumed and you're monetizing it with ads. Mm -hmm. uh, most utility publishers are providing some other value to the user. So, they could be a car site where you're searching for cars, they could be, a, a, you know, a Uber or a Grab or yeah. something like that. Uh, so, there's somebody who has kind of another source of revenue usually. Yeah. And then is also making money from ads as a kind of more of a supplemental yeah. side of it. So next year is going to be interesting, I think, because uh, I, I'm predicting that a thousand walled gardens will uh, sort of bloom in the new ecosystem because of various things like uh, privacy concerns, ITP, GDPR, CCPA. So let's talk about that, actually, because walled gardens is quite an interesting one. Uh, regarding the utility publishers. So, so let's talk about some of the clients you work with. Obviously, you, you work yeah. with a lot. So could you map out so how one of your clients works in that sort of ecosystem? So yeah, absolutely. Let's, and let's talk about a wall garden uh, from the sort of, a kind of like the Twitters of the world or the Snaps of the world. Let's talk about yeah. from, a, from the perspective of a smaller uh, intent-based or utility publisher. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's a good point about, uh, you know, the companies who are making real money from ad tech for the most part, have built their own hot forms. Yes. Right? When we look at like Facebook and Google, people talk about the data, but really the real value they have is that they've built their own unique platform that brings their own first party data. You can bring in third party data and have direct relationships with all these advertisers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've done is we have a platform that helps publishers build that. Yeah. And so like we can give an example, uh, company Edmonds, who I know, uh, I don't think is very big over here, but no. it's a large, uh, U.S. Like uh, auto trader, so kind of like auto trader. Scott, Sky Twenty Four in Germany. You want sure. To so you can. Uh, so on Edmunds, you will go. You're going there to research a car. They'll mm -hmm. tell you the you know the common invoice prices of cars, things like that. Uh, and they work with hundreds of dealers or thousands of dealers all across the United States. So they have these direct relationships with customers, and they already have. They they use banner ads and things like that currently, but they wanted to build a really custom native unit that they could then sell directly to these dealerships. Yeah. So the way we work. So so we look at Edmunds. You know, just overly simplistic here. You know, you have a search box where I'm going to come and look for, you know, what what car I'm looking for. Yeah. Right. And then you're going to have search results, and those kind of look like these cards. And so each of these individual cards is a car. I'm going to draw a car here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great car. Uh, so each of these each of these you know tiles is a car. And so this this is like a perfect opportunity for a really high impact native ad, right? And so uh, each one of these, let's say I'm looking for a, you know, Toyota. What's a popular like Toyota over here? Yeah. I think you all have different, well, different Prius. brands. We can, Prius. We can, we can right. go, we can go all, uh, all in an electric car. Like all that. right. Uh, Toyota Prius. You know, I search for that and it's going to show up with all these different Priuses available at all these different dealers, whether they're, you know, right around you, a couple miles away, like different prices. So each one, any one of these dealers wants to move up in the search ranking, yeah. just like they would for, you know, Google AdWords. So kind of a similar model. So what happens is, though, there's a lot of things that go into making that work. So when you think about what, you, what you'd have to build on your own, you have to build a system that will do pacing, right? So like I want to spend, you know, or, and budgeting, right? These kind of go hand in hand. So I want to spend, I'm a car dealer, I want to spend $100 a day promoting my Toyota Priuses. Yeah. Right? And so then that's a whole system you have to build to be able to do that. And then there's also targeting. Right, like they only want to target, let's say, people in London, yep. and then they want to target people that search for Toyota Prius, and maybe they only want to only you know target it at you know five to ten at night because that's when they think people are doing the best car research. So kind of all your normal targeting, things like frequency capping. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you have to build, you know, so let's say frequency capping, and then you have reporting, right? Because we have to be able to go in and say how many times was it shown, 
you know, who clicked on it. You can track, you know, you want to track conversions. So who actually booked an appointment to go see the car based on this ad. So you have this whole kind of background of what you would need to do that. And in the past, people like Twitter, Google, Facebook built all this themselves. Yes. Right. And they well, spent it's a huge, huge engineering millions, cost. Yeah. Millions and millions yeah. of dollars, right, to do that. And they yeah. built these very complex systems. Yeah. Not every company is going to want to invest mm -hmm. that much to do it. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we have all of this and we wrap it up in our APIs. And so that way, somebody like Edmonds can then, you know, when this search result happens, so when this search, when they click that search button, they can make a call to their native system, right? So their search service. Yeah. And they can make a call to our API. And this way we, they return their native results and then they also return from us which ones should be promoted. Okay. And the cool thing here, like the really big distinction between a normal ad server and what we do is that if you just use double click or whatever, mm -hmm. you could stick a banner in here. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen this before. Yeah, right? like yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a banner and it's like, we call it like fake native. Yeah. Like it like yeah. kind of looks like a car, but when you click on it, it's, you can't like, you know, save it for later. Like maybe there's a save button or a star button, you know, the things like that. It's not really It's clunky. Integrated. And it's, it's clunky. It, it doesn't and look it, native to the it actual It looks save. fake and it gets ad blocked. Yeah. Right? Of course. And so what, <laughs> <laughs> and so our API, what it ends up doing is just returns a little bit of JSON which is just, you know, a small bit of encoded data. Yeah. And so this data might just say something like one, two, three, four. And that's the ID of which car they want to have promoted. And so then when they do this promoted listing, you know, this one's marked promoted. It's always good to you have to make sure you yeah. mark it as yeah, it's of course, promoted. Of course. But that's actually a real listing. Okay. Right. So it, it has the same like like or save or compare. Uh, it has it works all exactly the same way, and because this call is server to server, you know they're calling it on their back end to our back end. Yeah. Then there's no ad blocking in play. There's no third party data. We don't store any data. We're yeah. not collecting any data. There's no third party cookies. Yeah. It's kind of all super clean native ad that gets through ad blockers that is totally integrated. So talk about the process of how you actually get uh, the technology there, the type of the publishers, because obviously. These are not obviously obvious publishers in many ways. Like, and the, the, the journey they have to take to get here is, is a tough one. So how do you actually talk to these about, you know, about building these specific products? Because they probably did start off with the double clicks and the ad text of the world and now realize that, you know what, actually, as an entity, I've got really, really interesting data within, within my walled garden. So yeah. is that where the conversation starts before initially going, our intent signals are as good as anybody else's. How do we monetize this? How do we work with our existing uh, advertiser pool? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's it's a product manager at one of these companies who's a been product tasked. manager. Yeah, product manager. Wow. So we're well, what, what, is, what is that? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, I mean, the ads product manager is like a new category that's rising. Right. right. A lot of these people who came out of Facebook, came out of Twitter, places or Google, came out and saw what they did at those companies. And saying, how do we come and do this here? Okay. You know, and I think, and also Amazon's the other one where people look at Amazon's financials and be like, you know, and they're like, wow, there's like this multi-billion dollar ad business that they're just making that's higher margin than their e-commerce business. Yeah. And so every other company is like, how do we, how do we layer in something like that? So these companies you think are making a, a sort of big leap saying, we need a product ad manager to come in here and say, understand what our business is understand our consumers, our, our customers, and understand how we build a bespoke uh, approach around that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So I think the ad product manager is, is the one who's coming in and saying, we need to build something that is like a Google or Facebook. Right. And not just where do we put banner ads okay. or how do we get more pre-bid bidders in or how yeah. do we you know, do all of that kind of traditional ad tech optimization. Okay. And this is versus the traditional publishers. The traditional publishers don't really have an ad manager effectively. Some of them anyway. Yeah. I know the Washington Post and a few others. Yeah, I mean, they've been doing, building a lot of technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but generally, most of the, uh, the um, traditional publishers don't have an yeah. ad manager. Yeah, no, and I mean, or an ad product, like a product manager. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the problem with traditional, or the problem for traditional publishers is that a lot of times they don't have this strong intent data. Yeah. And so a lot of times it's like, I'm going to read a random news story I'm not searching for something I want to mm. buy. It's mm. not, you know, you don't like, I mean, you think about somebody like Edmonds, they have data of every car you've searched yeah. for and all this other kind of data that you've logged in and volunteered. Whereas traditional publishers don't have a lot of that. Yeah. And so it's not to say there's not opportunities like this for traditional publishers. Yeah. I just think they need, they need product managers right. and they're figuring out like what, you know, what is it we do to really provide advertisers something unique. Yeah. 
So how do you think this category will evolve, the utility publishers? Because we were talking about this before the actual po- uh, the, the whiteboard session, um, in the sense that we, you know, there could be an opportunity for maybe for local publishers, for instance, right, who have a ton of really interesting sort of mid to long tail uh, um, clients, because it, it seems to be a, a sort of demographic that ad tech and publishers have kind of abandoned a little bit and left it to Facebook and right. Google and now just basically scooped them up and making yeah. a ton of money. So where do you think that that could go uh, f- from here, like so next year? Yeah. Do you think there could, there'll be a rethink about how, how sort of they service those people? Well, I think a lot of it's going to be, I think a lot of it will end up being verticalized. Right. Like, I think that's the interesting thing about somebody like an Edmonds is that they work with thousands and thousands of dealerships. Yeah. And these are people that the agency, you know, there's some specific agencies, but the big agencies aren't working with them. They're mainly, of course not. They're no. using Google, Facebook, yeah. and then, you know, Edmonds is saying we should be your third, you know, your third wheel. Yes, your, exactly. You know, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that that's going to happen in a lot of different industries. Like I think you'll see, you you kind of already see it happening in uh, like real estate and things like that. Like if you go to a different Trula or different kind of real estate brands where you're searching for a house and and realtors can promote things. So I think you're going to end up with like this verticalization to address a lot of those smaller people. Yeah. Like I think some of the general ones could do it. Like we were talking earlier about you know if you're a local newspaper and you have all these relationships with flower shops and. And whoever, like, you could definitely help them. You could be that. But I think, you could be that interface, that layer. Like, so I mean, like, the good thing about Facebook and Google, I know they, they take a lot of money, but they do have nice APIs that people can plug into. So, yeah, yeah. could you not become that layer that said, "Hey, why do you need to have to go to fifteen different platforms?" I mean, look at look at look at the what's happening, right? ITV in this country have their own sort of wall garden, right? You've got Snap, Pinterest. You've got all these different, like, even some of the publishers are coming together under the Ozone sort of uh, um, umbrella. So there's, there's going to be tons of these different wall gardens. So yeah. There's an opportunity for, for, like Edmunds, for instance, could be like, why just buy with Edmunds? You could buy across all these different Oh, absolutely, layers. right? And then they could even use their data in ways, like it's still first party data, they could figure out how to use their data in ways to, to build audiences yeah. on other platforms and things like that. Yeah. So I totally agree. So how are you? Where are you going to go next with the, with the platform? Like obviously you, you you work with these publishers, but where do you see sort of the, you guys sort of fitting in going forward for, for for these utility publishers? Yeah. So our goal, I mean, we're going to keep keep enhancing what we have from a standpoint of how do we help them launch this? Because right? it's all so, about empowerment, really. You're right. like you're that tech layer. Instead of spending like a couple of million quid with a load of engineers to figure it out, and it takes yeah. years and years. You have, you have a plug and play. It evolves to the actual well, and, you know, product yeah, and, the, and the big thing that we do is because it's a set of APIs, it's almost it's pretty much required that the company have engineers right. who are going to customize right. on top right. of it. So our goal is like, how do we how do we give them the tools to do this in you know four weeks? Yeah, you know, launch something really quick. Okay, right, and like instead of years. Yeah, but that's very different from like we're not a you know drop it in. Right? Yeah, like I think a lot of people, a lot of publishers want a quick fix. Yeah, they want to. How do we drop this in and and say, oh, you know, I built an ad platform. Yeah. Like that's not going to work because it's just going to become a, you know, it's going to be like generic self serve. Yeah, which has never worked because yeah. you know nobody wants to just go and and pay list price for banner ads. Yeah, right. You have to have something unique that you're selling. Yeah. that you can then sell. Yeah, uh, and so for us, like the the biggest piece is here. The other thing that we can talk about, since I know you like programmatic. Well, you know, <laughs> it is evolving. So we've we started to do integrations with some of our customers doing PMP deals on these. Okay, so, interesting. So, you know, one of the interesting things, like bigger brands are pushing more and more to say, uh, I want, only want to buy through my, you know, only want to buy through the trade desk yes, or Media of Math or whatever, right? Like I want to buy it all through one But you place. can package up deals specifically for those actual... We can, so deal. what we can do is we can actually PMP. package up deals that they don't look like a banner ad, yeah. right? Like they have this kind of custom kind Native. of code. Mm. But then because it's a PMP deal... Like we can transact it totally through the DSP. So there's opportunity for, for you to, to plug Edmund's native tool or native ad product into the into the wider sort of buying community. Yeah, and to be clear, Edmunds isn't doing this yet. No, we've of got course a couple not. we've got a couple of people who are right. in beta on this. Right. And it's and it's amazing, right? Because right. it's and it's also it's not open marketplace, so you're not worried about a crappy banner ending yeah, up. In yeah, there. yeah, of course. It's all about, you know, it's just being able to transact that through uh, the DSP, and yeah. sometimes even layering your own data in, depending yeah. on the, you know, cookies and what, what's the GDPR and of things course. like that. But it's possible. So, in, in terms of outside the US, what, do you see this? Because you obviously work with some people in Asia. Can you know where do you see the sort of sweet spots? Then, like Southeast Asia's got lots of sort of interesting sort of utility apps popping up. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, yeah. So that... I was mentioning earlier, we work with Grab, oh, okay. who's like the Uber, you, you know, the Uber of Asia. Yeah. 
And they, you know, they had a classic use case of they have, you know, this great mobile app. I don't know if you've ever been, you know, if you've well, used I've it in used, Singapore. I've, it's used, like I've get, used it to order food. Yeah, yeah you can mostly. do whatever you, can yeah. get whatever you want on it, right? Yeah. You can go somewhere, you can order food, but they have these great opportunities for they're doing these really high impact native ads. Yeah. Like what you would see in like an Instagram or somewhere like that. And they're fully integrated and it's using that same like API. And so we see like the biggest markets are where there are lots of utility publishers. Okay. And so I mean Europe is a huge market because every, you know, every, you know, country has its own, you know, this is our marketplace. This is our real estate company. This yeah. is where people go for cars. Like it's loads of them. It's very like, you know, divided between all the different countries, mm. like as they grew up organically. Mm. Uh, and then the same we're seeing in Southeast Asia, where just every, you know, it's similar in that all these different countries, well, they, lots of they share a close region. Yeah, you but know. there's lots of interesting verticals you can go to, like property, cars, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the utility apps. It's very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, so basically, so obviously next year is the utility publishing year, year. of the utility publisher. Uh, it's the year of the utility publisher, and Azrex obviously there to to help power those ad businesses. And James, thanks for coming into the into the studio slash office yeah. to talk about the utility publisher. Awesome, thank you. And we'll see you next time on Trader Talk TV. Thank you.